Hi, and my name is Kieran. I'm from Woodruff School, which is in Lyme Regis, and in February 2013, 16 students from years 9 to 12 came together to learn recording, research and interviewing skills so that we could record stories with older people from the town about their memories of growing up and working in Lyme Regis. Maisie, Ellie, Rory and Ruth from Year 10, and Polly, Brianna and myself, Kieran, from Year 12, interviewed David Cousins. David was keen to talk about his memories from Lyme Regis Boys Club, the landslip that happened in the 1960s, his love for the town cinema, and his thoughts and feelings about our very own Woodruff School. During the war, the Regent Cinema played an important role in the lives of many children from Lyme. For David Cousins, it was more than just a place to watch films. For him, it was Wonderland. We decided to take David on a trip down memory lane by taking him back to the cinema he loves so much. So tell us where we are then now, David. Well, we're outside the purpose-built Lyme Regis Regent Cinema, which played such an important part in the role of all us youngsters just after the war. Uh, I suppose it's our first touch of romance going to the cinema and escapism, but it really was a great deal, a very significant part of our growing up. Now, I want to take you inside now, and it's changed, obviously. It's a super little cinema, but I hope you feel what I feel when we go inside. Oh. <laughs> Seriously, I'm, I'm not making this up now. This, 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 this is absolutely incredible feeling. It really is. Well, I'm feeling excited again. I'm feeling that I'm walking back into that world of make-believe because, as I told you, it was quite an austere bringing up for us all. This was an escape for us all. And when we came out of the cinema, I remember we often felt dejected because we'd experienced all that and we came out and said, we were back to reality. It was, you know, what a letdown. <laughs> So we're in the main body of the cinema now. What exactly is it that you're thinking? What are you feeling? Well, I'm wishing I was young again, actually. I suppose we all do that. But uh, again, I get the feeling what a spanking little cinema this is. I mean, for a size of the town, this is incredible. I turn round and I notice that the double seats have gone, which is where all the courting couples used to sit, right? Bottom right-hand side would be one Lyme Regis gang of boys. Six months of time to go to the cinema then. Three different programmes a week and two... Pro twice an evening. I know boys who came to cowboy films bringing little cap guns, shooting the outlaws as they went along. That's the sort of thing that happened. But we all sat along the front. The richer people sat at the back, which was the dearer seats. And of course, they were one and ninepence each. Now, one and ninepence, how much is that? About ten, not, not, about eight P today. During and just after the war, I mean, they used to queue to come in here. It really was packed. It really was. And, uh, I suppose people got in the habit of coming to Lyme to the cinema and wear all, lots of others closed in the austere times after the war and later on. This cinema stayed. And we're very proud of this cinema because this is probably the smallest town in England to not only have its own cinema, but to have its own theatre as well. So there's a great tradition of entertainment in this town. Can we go and uh, sit where you'd usually sit? That's you very, sit very sit. simple. Follow me. We're going right down to the bottom of the cinema now, as close to the screen as I can get. Until I got a fraction older, when I got about in my teens, of course, it, it, it was customary to bring your girlfriend to the cinema, you know, and you'd sit a further back so you could hold her hand and no one would see you. But I would sit along this row here, right in the front. I think the seats actually came forward a little more then, but this is where we'd sit. <sighs> Much more comfortable than they used to be, the seats are, but, uh, oh yeah, I, I'm... I'm I feel that, I uh, don't really know how I feel, I just feel so content, I just feel sort of, I'm back home again, you know, it, it, it's a strange feeling, and I, I mean that most sincerely, it's a strange feeling, uh, a feeling of, I can get away from myself, I can, be, I can go into another world, I can experience, all those things are on the screen, they were having chicken, and ice cream, bananas, we didn't get things like that, there was rationing after the war, and you thought, the day will come when I can have that. And you go outside, and that's when you feel dejected because, oh, we're back to reality. It's like dreaming that you have a bicycle and waking up next day and realising it was only a dream. And exactly what that sort of feeling I had. So you told us a rather funny story about a family coming and having tea here. Would you like to explain a bit more about that? Yes, I would, actually. It's a very vivid memory of mine, but just after the war in the late 40s, there was still a housing problem, there was still rationing. But a family I, I knew used to live near the Cobb in a chalet, a family of about five. No hot water, no decent heating, no real facilities. I think they had a standpipe outside. So on a cold winter's evening, 
about six o'clock first performance because sometimes they would have two performances. This lady would come along and I was seated behind her once. I saw her go to the bottom of her bag and she took out a loaf and a knife and she cut her bread up and buttered it and gave out bread and tea and cups it. They were having tea and cakes. They were, they were warm, you see. They had a lovely time watching their film and having their tea in the cinema. And the management never minded. They didn't stop them. It was just a family cinema. But uh, I've never forgot that. It's so strange to see a lady go to her bag and bring out a big loaf of bread and then get a knife and start cutting up bread. <laughs> So um, what would have the atmosphere been like in a film that you, as children especially, wanted to see? Well, first of all, you'd tell your mates, I'll see you in the cinema at X time, you know. But you'd all meet outside, and it would be sort of an electric atmosphere again. You know, you were going to see something great. Uh, and the feeling was, well, let's get in there and let's see it. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you just see, it's just another world, a world of make-believe. Maybe you kids who would probably... You have your problems, you have your difficulties, but I think we had different problems than you did. We had less opportunity. So to come to the cinema and to see all that happening here was a wonderful opportunity to live almost life vicariously. It's nice to have, to come back to the spot which probably didn't formulate your life but had such a significant interest, effect on your life when you were young. And I think it helped, helped us to grow up with a greater sense of contentment than perhaps we might have. And sitting here now makes me feel very, very grateful that I had the opportunity to come to this wonderful cinema. And I'm also so pleased that it's still thriving and, and, and I think it's got a great future. We are very proud of this cinema.